Hi, I'm Kelsey Brennan-Wessels, and I'm here at the Living Planet Symposium in Edinburgh with Tim Wright from the University of Leeds. Now, Tim, can you begin by telling us a bit about what research you do and how Earth observation satellites help you in your work? Okay, so I'm interested in earthquakes and volcanoes and understanding what causes them and whether we can provide any kind of warning or um, hazard forecasting for these uh, natural disasters. Um, and I use Earth observation to measure how the ground deforms around earthquake faults and ar around volcanoes. And I use those measurements, very precise measurements of the ground motions, to say something about the, the hazard in those locations. Mm -hmm. Now, I understand these measurements. It's a very complicated process. Can you maybe explain, in layman's terms, how satellites can measure these, these deformations? Yeah, so essentially, we use radar satellites. The satellites are orbiting around the Earth, and they come back um, every, uh, every few weeks to the same location. And what we do is we look at the images acquired on those different dates, and we make a very precise difference map between them. And by doing that, we can make measurements that are kind of on that kind of scale, you know, a, a few millimeters precision in those measurements. Mm -hmm. And we can, the important thing, and the really exciting thing about doing it in this way, as opposed to making the measurements on the ground, is that we can make those measurements pretty much anywhere on the planet, and we can map them over large spatial distances. So we can make measurements all the way across China, or um, map the whole of Turkey. Whereas if you're doing this on the ground, um, then you have to go there, um, you know, the work we do in Ethiopia, for example, we have to trek through the desert with camels to put instruments in the ground to make the measurement. And satellites make it possible to make these kinds of observations everywhere. They're really um, essential to what we do. They've transformed the way we're doing science. Mm -hmm. That's great. Now, can this information be used for managing uh, natural disasters, for example? Sure. And it's... Um, we're moving, I think, towards a stage where we're more operational. And over the last um, 10 or 20 years with ERS and Envisat, uh, two European satellites that we've used a lot, then those satellites haven't, um, they've, they've acquired fantastic data sets, but what they haven't done is been operational systems where they're acquiring data routinely in such a way that you could rely on using them for monitoring or, or for warning purposes. With the launch of Sentinel-1 next year, um, we'll have regular acquisitions for all the tectonic areas of the planet, all the volcanoes, and we'll be able to rely on those data being there, and we'll be able to build systems that incorporates those observations um, into more reliable uh, warning systems. Now, we have been able to use, um, use the uh, observations anyway, and on some occasions we get the data sets um, Soon after an earthquake, for example, in 2003, there was a big earthquake in Iran in a town called Bam, absolutely devastating earthquake. It killed about half the population of this small town, about 30,000 people. Um, and the, the geologists on the ground, the local civil defense organization, really couldn't find where the earthquake fault was. They, could, they really didn't understand what had happened. We were able to use the radar data to actually send the geologist in the field to find the location of the fault, and that really helps understand uh, what happened in the earthquake and then what the ongoing hazard is into the future. Okay, so do you think we'll be able to predict earthquakes in the future then? Uh, well, we don't like to use the, the, the prediction word. Uh, I think um, the it's very, very difficult. When people talk about prediction, what they really mean is... Uh, usually is a short time frame you know there's going to be an earthquake in two days time in this particular location it's going to be magnitude six what we don't think we can do that it's probably impossible to be able to do that um, but what we can do is measure the slow build-up of tectonic strain around earthquake faults so the earth's crust is like a big uh, sheet of elastic if you like and if you if you gradually bend it eventually that snaps and it's the snapping that causes the earthquakes now we don't think there's any um, accelerated motions before earthquake uh, earthquakes occur but we can map the spatial pattern of that strain um, in that in those elastic blocks and we can identify places where the, the crust is straining. So these are places where there might be earthquakes in the future, where there will be earthquakes indeed in the future. And we can say something from the speed of the, uh, speed of the motions about how often earthquakes would occur in, in individual locations. And so with Sentinel-1 data, we're going to be able to do this for all of the deforming areas of the planet and really build a high resolution map of these very small tectonic strain rates um, and we're going to be able to use that to help improve forecasts of where earthquakes might occur and how often they would occur.
Great. Well, Tim, thank you so much for taking your time to speak with us today. And for all the latest on the Living Planet Symposium, just click on www.isa.int.